safe streets, vibrant neighborhoods, successful business and commerce. These are things that make a healthy community. We are a diverse community, rural, suburban, urban, a multitude of languages and ethnicities, ages and experiences. We are a collaborative community. Public-private partnerships make us a model community that others want to follow. It is what makes us unique. It is what makes us strong. The employees of Kent County reflect our diversity and seek to serve our communities. People in this county, in this area, we wrap our arms around each other. We come together to collaborate, to solve problems. Um, we're all working for the good of the whole. And I think that's wonderful. And you can see it. You can see it as you drive around Kent County. Our impact starts the day a baby is born and a birth certificate is issued, to protecting children from deadly diseases through vaccination, to the public safety and justice provided by law enforcement and the courts, to offering veteran services and caring for the elderly. Every day we work to keep our communities robust. I think if you are somebody who is interested in serving your community, in building a strong knowledge base and a good group of people to work with, then the county is one of your best employment opportunities out there. It's been completely rewarding in every way I could possibly explain for 26 years and I feel like I grow every single day still today. Leading these dedicated employees are 19 member board of commissioners and our county administrator controller, along with our elected officials and appointed department directors, placing emphasis on civic involvement, quality housing, vibrant neighborhoods, and strong, solid infrastructure to allow businesses to thrive. Professional, dedicated, collaborative, and innovative. Behind the scenes, collaboration between foundations, charitable organizations, nonprofits, for-profit businesses, public sector demonstrated through the county, the city of Grand Rapids, the townships, all the cities and the villages in our area. If we don't come together, then we will not have the strength that we have today, and I only hope to build upon that. Our aim is to make our communities the best they can be. We are involved in exciting development projects, sustainable recycling programs, and creative progressive prevention programming. We partner with elected officials, impacting policy ideas that become great achievements. We seek opportunities to reach out into the community and offer our services to help our residents make Kent County thrive. Our relationship um, is solid, um, both from a staff standpoint at the county level, as well as the Board of Commissioners. And um, they understand what we do and the benefits that we can do for the community, and vice versa, we couldn't do what we do without the help of Kent County. While most of us are busy running our lives, Kent County's elected officials, administrator controller, and over 1,600 employees are serving the communities where we live our lives, so we can all have a place we are proud to call home. Kent County, it's life well run. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, November 15th, it's 8.30. Uh, we have the Finance and Physical Resources Committee meeting. And the first item is public comment. Anyone? In the public? Is there any public here? Okay. Okay, Don, we'll move on to item two, which is the consent agenda, items A and B. So moved. Support. So moved and support. Does anyone care to remove anything from that? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we move to item three. Daryl, This is a request to recommend to the board to levy a winter 2016 Grand Rapids Public Museum and John Ball Zoo, Inc. Millage. The county administrator prepared a recommended budget for fiscal year 2017. On October 13th, the Board of Commissioners approved a resolution authorizing the levy of mills for the corrections detention, senior services, and veteran services. As a result of the November 8th, 2016 election, county electors authorized a new dedicated property tax millage in support of the Grand Rapids Public Museum and John Ball Zoo, Inc. And the Board of Commissioners is requested to levy a winter 2016 uh, Grand Rapids Public Museum and John Ball Zoo, Inc. millage. 
the resolution will authorize the levy of 0.44 mills. Uh, funds received from the levy of these millages will be utilized to support the Grand Rapids Public Museum and John Ball Zoo, Inc. in the fiscal year 2017 county budget. So move. Support. support. Support by Diane. Thank you. Questions? Would it be all right if I sang the zoo song? <laughs> no. He's uh, Millie Vanilli. He lip syncs. You know, if you do, we're probably going to vote no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass. The only it. reason I voted yes is to get you off the of airway. Yeah, that's all. Right. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. Dave. Um, yeah, just uh, since I sometimes dabble in in millage requests and, and racing to the collection box, um, are, are the results certified or what, what really has to happen to get everything lined up for this collection? I've always heard that you got to have like weeks, not days, between an election and a collection. However, I mean, again, I'm assuming, I'm looking at our attorney, and I'm assuming all's good. Yeah, the canvas is still going on. At, right. at this point in time, but it should be complete. This is a recommendation that's still going to the board Thursday. So, what, right. we're, what we're racing against here too is trying to provide notice to uh, the local jurisdictions and getting this on the bills that go out for December. So, yeah, there is some tension there. Okay. Cool. Any other questions or comments? So, the first collection is going to be in December. Yeah. Tax It'll bill? be on the bills in December. Anyone else? Harold, good job. Uh, oh, thank you. All kidding aside, and, uh, you're, I think that little ditty that was on there drove everybody pretty near nuts. <laughs> and, uh, probably what, put it over the top. <laughs> uh, if there's no other questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Item four, Daryl, please. This is a request to recommend to the board to approve the amended 2016 apportionment report. The general property tax law outlines the responsibility of the Board of Commissioners with respect to the annual apportionment report. The Board of Commissioners examines certificates of each local taxing jurisdiction and directs millage rates to be spread on taxable valuations. The board also determines the dollar requirements necessary to fund the assessment for grains to be spread on the respective township and city rolls. At its meeting on October 27th, the Board of Commissioners approved the 2016 apportionment report. On November 8th, 2016, the voters approved a .44 millage for the Grand Rapids Public Museum and John Ball Zoo, which requires the apportionment report to be amended. Attached is the 2016 apportionment report as amended and as prepared by the Bureau of Equalization. In a motion to approve? So moved. Support? S support. Thank you. Questions? This is just basically a it, paperwork yep. to make sure everything is what it is. Okay. And all the questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item five. This is a request to recommend to the board to allocate $382,476 in funding for human services programs as recommended by the Department of Health and Human Services Board. The Board of Commissioners annually appropriates funds to the Department of Health and Human Services to be awarded by the DHHS Board following a review of proposals submitted by various community or social service agencies. Programs included in the current unmet needs category are those agencies and programs that annually receive assistance due to an absence of other funding sources, their ability to leverage significant other resources, or are in support of a cooperative effort of multiple funding sources. The 2017 recommendation includes $382,476 to fund 14 programs for the current unmet needs. As a result of ongoing unmet needs and general fund revenues remaining relatively flat for 2017, the number of requests for funding exceeded the amount of funding available for distribution. And then you have a memo with the uh, information on it. So move. Support. support. Move to support. Uh, question? David, um, thank you. Uh, just curious on that last line item, that hold for medical transportation provider change. Um, 
what what that is and what the prospects are for that that change. Uh, good morning. I'm Nancy Marshall from the HHS. That last line, uncommitted, um, we've been told that American Red Cross will stop providing medical transportation for people as of June. So we set aside half of what we normally would have allocated to them for the possibility of the new provider starting and then allowing them to bid on that for that funding. Don't know who that is yet? We do not. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Uh, sure. Just, just a comment. <clears throat> this is, uh, we've been doing this a long time, and um, it's a non -man mandated resource. Uh, happy to see that the county is in a position to continue this funding, and we've been able to continue the unmet needs even during the Great Recession. So, uh, this is one of the things the county does to, to help out these organizations and I'm just uh, proud of the fact that we're able to at least contribute some dollars to the program. Right. It really helps uh, fill a gap that we have in our community. So as a, in representation of my board, <coughs> we're very grateful to the okay. fact that the county does do this. Thank you. Go ahead, Stan. Thank you. Uh, I can read the bottom line of what was requested and what's allocated, but what is the real unfunded gap of services out there? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to get back to me with today, but I okay. think that's a point that's overshadowed with this chart. And, you know, a lot of uh, the agencies understand that there's a limited amount of funding, so they don't even apply for these funds anymore. Okay. Thank you. If we, if we tried to fill the, the real unfunded. <coughs> well, it's true, but there's a lot of things that we do fund. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any, any other? Well, I mean, the second bite, I guess that, that question followed by <coughs> Commissioner Ponstein is that this process, um, isn't it now limited to those who, like, were funded in this, you know, funded in 2016 were the only the ones allowed to apply for 17? No, that's not and it correct. Was it was open to anyone? Yes. Okay. And then the second part, though, it's also when we look at unmet needs, again, I, I continue to echo Commissioner Morgan's thought that it's great that we're able to do this. At the same time, you know, I mean, there's a massive unmet need within your programs just related to home health services. Um, people with disabilities and their family cannot find people to work for $8 an hour or $9 an hour. All home care agencies across the county are, you know, that to, to find and hire and retain direct care workers, it's, it's, it's beyond a crisis point. And, and so, again, it's great we do this. I don't know how, how we spend our time and energy talking with the folks upstream, be they in Lansing or Washington, to say, okay, if we're going to fund this, what really is the need? And, and I would argue that we're way below need, nowhere near a want or, or a luxurious amount of service provided to folks. And that's just one example of, you know, the services that you all have to provide with stretched budgets. So I could just imagine if you all had an opportunity to sketch out what the unmet needs are, let alone us pesky nonprofits, you know, who are trying to do a little bit more for our community members as well. So. Right. The, um, certainly the home health programs that we have out there uh, yes it's a bit, it's become a challenge to find people who will work for the wage that we pay um, certainly that's one of our unmet needs that really um, would be difficult to use these additional county funds to help raise right. that rate Correct. since it's a rate that's pretty much covered by the state. Um, I think that we also recognize that affordable housing is a big issue in this community. And so we continue to work towards that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday uh, was at the Wyoming Kentwood Chamber of Commerce and the issue of the new uh, time and a half law 
that's going into effect, uh, I believe, December the 1st of 60. Uh, the effect it was having on uh, care for our seniors and uh, um, how entities, uh, the, the uh, Medicare, Medicaid payments have not increased, yet their cost uh, uh, is going up substantially, that it's going to have a very negative impact, the concern was, on, on care. How do you see that affecting uh, your uh, area of service? Uh, is this going to be causing problems in providers and uh, whether or not they can can keep doing business? Well, I think um, it's one and the same. We are the funder, per se, for the senior help that through Medicaid. So that all funnels through my agency. Um, so yes, we see that potentially um, as an increase in the need because at this point they have not designed anything into the home health programs to pay for overtime. So they are going to be limited to uh, the 40 hours per week. Okay, Thank you, Chair. Could, um, could you just give a quick summary of the process for how this works. When was there an open period for applications? When did it open? When did it close? How how did the board look at uh, you know the 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 amounts and the allocations? Um, I have to look through my stuff to see if I have the dates of when it opened and closed. The process that we use is once the um, county has decided how, what amount of funds can be allocated for the unmet needs. The county then puts on their website and sends notices out that these funding, this fund is available and people, agencies can submit uh, proposals. And then the proposals come in, uh, we put them all together, and then the DHS, DHHS, sorry, board, um, reviews all of the contracts that have been submitted, the request for funding, and decides where the funding could best be utilized in their opinion. And then it, uh, we put it together and send it in to back to the county. Um, and then it goes before the finance committee. And then finally it goes before the commissioners. Does that Answer yep. your question. So, uh, how many people at DHS look at it and kind of get the? Is there a committee that does that, or we have the three board members, myself and Zaveda Selden Johnson, who are the directors at Kent County DHHS, and then um, a representative from the county. So either this year it was Wayman Brett, um, last year it was Matthew Van Zanten. Uh, Matthew's kind of busy right now, so um, he did. He wasn't part of it this year, but certainly we all get together then we, and we talk about what are the greatest needs and what has uh, what have these funds traditionally helped support things like uh, two one one. So is that something that yes, the county wants to continue to support, and our board felt that yes, it was. So there was things that really. We look at first, traditionally have been supported by the county, expectation that hopefully we can continue to have funding to do that, and then what's left, we look at what contracts have been submitted and make decisions what funding can be covered. Excellent, and then just to reiterate Commissioner Morgan's comments, what a wonderful opportunity we have to have this ability to add this to the mix because I, I think it's fabulous. So well done. It's in the county processes, very similar to what we do with senior millage, is well thought out and uh, the, the, the process works. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item six. This is a request to recommend to the board to approve a sublease with the City of Grand Rapids for judicial offices, a courtroom, and associated space on the seventh floor of the Kent County Courthouse. 
The courthouse was constructed through a collaboration between the county and the city of Grand Rapids and construct to provide for both the 61st District Court and 17th Circuit Court. The building was designed to accommodate for future growth and, uh, of both courts. The county has two unfinished judicial offices and courtrooms in its portion of the building. The city currently has a judicial suite and courtroom in its portion of the building, which is only used occasionally for overflow. The Board of Commissioners approved an additional circuit court judgeship in December 2015, and funding for the build-out of the unfinished space is included in the 2017 recommended capital improvement program. The project will require an extended construction period to minimize disruption of court proceedings and is expected to extend past the start date of the new judgeship. Staff from the city and the county have developed an agreement for the county to use a judicial suite and courtroom within the portion of the building assigned to the 61st District Court during the construction period for the cost of operating and maintaining the space estimated at $10,957 per month. The lease contains a true-up clause to adjust payments to actual costs at the end of the lease. The initial term of the lease will be 12 months and may be renewed for 12 additional one-month periods. The sublease has been reviewed and approved as to form by Assistant Corporate Counsel. So moved. Support? Support. Okay, support. Questions? All in favor? I'm sorry. Um, when is the uh, construction of the new space supposed to be done? And secondarily, what at what rate per square foot do we lease this space to the city that we're about to sublease back? I'm going to go to Al or Mary. Al? Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. As, as I've shared with you before, that, that uh, uh, even though even though there is balls and ceiling and such out there, there is a substantial amount of architectural engineering work that needed to be done. And uh, uh, we're, we're in the uh, process of reviewing our draft construction documents. So we're, we're to that point. And we look to uh, most likely send it out for bid to a general contractor during the month of December. Uh, bids back sometime in January. And then it's uh, projected to be uh, uh, 16 to 18 month construction time. We're uh, during our preparation of documents and, and, and some meetings and such, we might be able to expedite that. There, there is some opportunity to do some daytime hours. Uh, you know, the telegraphing of sound when you're working in a uh, constructed building, especially with courtrooms and court recording equipment, makes it a little more challenging. So originally it was projected to be the 16 to 18 months with 100% off hours. If we can do some of those during normal working hours, some of the work, that, that will help expedite that. So is it 12 months? Sublease sufficient. It's, it's 12 months, but then another uh, uh, option to renew it. month by month. So if it was to go, I don't know, 14 months, then be then to yeah. then we could do month by month after the first year. Okay. It'll take at least a year. And, and do we know what the rate that the city pays us per square foot for this space? I, I can calculate that out, but it's 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 the 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 that the, the, the city pays us. You mean for? Right, if I understand it correctly, they currently lease that space from us, no. the whole area. They're paying their the prorated share of the building. Right, the, the building is owned by the City County Building Authority. Okay. And, or the County Building Authority. Um, one of the two, but what it happens is both the city and the county pay the authority, and the authority pays the debt on it. Once the debt is paid, the city will, uh, the county will own, seven, and I'm doing rough figures, 70% of the building, the city will own 30%. Okay, okay, so they do actually and, own that portion. Yeah, and it's the county building authority. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. It's a pretty, pretty it's, it's very fair for, for everyone there. They're happy to do it, and, and, and we can really use it, so it's pretty yeah. fair to everybody. Perfect, thanks. Just, just a point toward the agreement. We're just paying the operating cost based on a square footage basis. The city is still paying the debt service on that same square footage. I saw that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Dave? Wait, when are yeah. those bonds retired? Let's see, two, 1991, 2000. Was it 20, 20 years? years? It was a 25 year bond issue, so 2026 ish. 
okay. issue. Or wait, 2000, yeah, or maybe it's a 30 year bond issue. <laughs> I can't tell you, we can get you that. 2001, okay. probably 10 Daryl's trying to do math. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just can't remember if it's a 20 or 30 year bond issue. You, you look like yeah, Jethro de Bodine trying to figure that. <laughs> okay, any other questions? <laughs> Hearing now, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lady. I just got a question um, relative to uh, a couple of our action items that, you know, with the successful zoo museum millage, um, there was a sketch provided in the budget process relative to the dollars we're not going to transfer to the zoo next fiscal year. What, what's good, now that it's real? Um, what, what is going to be the actual process? Because especially what's coming on Thursday coming from legislative committee is the management pay plan increase. Like I'm assuming all of that, you know, we just approved the, the unmet needs. All of that's in the budget we're approving on Thursday. And then eventually we'll do something. Yes, my intent is to have something in at the December meeting in terms of recommendation on how that can be reappropriated, but it would come through this body and then the board commissioners. But looking at December, how many meetings do we have in December? We have two finance and two board meetings. Is that okay. Right? But likely no action in January? Or? No, I'm, I'm looking at the next finance committee meeting having a recommendation for discussion to include in the board meeting. Like the 15th of December? Yeah. So okay, we. So that's yeah. going to be a, uh, uh, be a pretty important meeting to. Uh, that's, that's the chance we're going to have to weigh in on, yeah. on that two plus million dollars or whatever. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Uh, I've just got one. Uh, Daryl, in, in the budget you, that you presented a couple weeks ago, you, you talked about not putting any money into the uh, hotel motel tax. Uh, we've been putting upwards to a million dollars in, in there to, to help with the future payments. Um, how I, I don't remember seeing a report on that recently. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. Of the hotel motel oh, we, we can get that uh, yeah we as we have transitioned to the new financial management system we have been in, in the process of transitioning the reports and getting the data inputted so the intent is to provide you with information related to our quarterly financial overview and it will be included in that okay uh, we haven't seen <coughs> quarterly reports so only yeah it's been probably How since long? may since How may long? Since we've been transitioning since May? No, we've been transitioning since January. We have yeah, any quarterly is there, reports. Since is there since issues May? with the financial reporting? Um, there have been issues with the, the system transition, which is not unusual. We are fixing those issues, and we anticipate that uh, those will be completed by the end of this year. But you will have a, finance, uh, a report sometime in December. So, that was so a, it's taken a year to, to transition. That's well, a big yeah, program. It is. Uh, it's taken a year to do that? Yes, it has. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any miscellaneous? Not for uh, the word journal. Thank you. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. We are 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 Kent County. We 
We are Kent County. Bayya, Kent County. Ami, Kent County. Somos, Kent County. Mas Ira, Kent County. We are 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 Kent County. Oh yeah.